bit belated, but they're giving the starting lineups for the second game coming up between the Pikeville Panthers and the Beachwood Tigers. Let's go down and join the public address announcer, Jeff Sloan. For the Tigers, number 56, Roger Slagle. between the Pikeville Panthers and the Tigers of Beachwood. Jeff, uh, Beachwood won the toss, but they deferred their choice till the second half, and I think Pikeville elected to receive. Pikeville will receive as head coach Hillard Howard entering his 16th season at the helm of the Panthers. He's been here, well, he's this is the only place he's ever been in 19th season overall, and he's accumulated 139 wins in that career at Pikeville since 1972. And he's being opposed tonight by one of the finest coaches in Kentucky as well, Bernie Berry out of Beachwood from Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. I had the pleasure of working with Bernie during my radio days in Northern Kentucky. And Bernie, a class act also. He's in his 13th season as the head coach of the Beachwood Tigers, 14th overall, and he has a Class A title under his belt. Back in 1984, Beachwood won the Class A title, defeating Paris 35 to 26, and that ended Paris's uh, consecutive string of victories. And head coach Randy Reese at the time, as Pikeville, as I should say, Beachwood won it 35-26 over Paris back in 1984. But this is 1987, and this is the Pike County Bowl, the Pikeville National Bank third annual Pike County Bowl, and Beachwood will kick off to start this football game against the Panthers. And we're expecting just a dandy in this game tonight. We saw an excellent football game in our first one as Belfry held on, or I should say came from behind to defeat Corbin 14-10. I'd say the preseason polls place these two teams number one and number two, so we'll, we'll soon find out. <laughs> that, that's right. This ought to make for a good football game. Mike Miller will kick off for Beachwood, number 29, as you see him ready to kick the football away. And back deep for Pikeville. Robbie Wright. Robbie Wright, number 10, 5'11", 170, and a senior. He's the deep man. Also back there, Greg Hackney. At one side, and the other side is Tim Sanders. And we're about ready to start this second game from the Pike County Bowl. And there's Miller. He approaches the ball, and this game is underway. It's going to be taken by one of the short men. That's Chad Thornsbury who comes up with it, and he is stopped right about his 35-yard line. Jason Crowman, one of the men on the stop for Beachwood. I tell you what, if they hit the same way the rest of the night they hit on that kickoff, it's going to be one whale of a ball game. Well, I expect them to do just that. I, I really do. It will be a dandy. First and 10 from the 35 for Pikeville as we begin this football game. And in at quarterback, Matt Blair, giving to the first man through. That is Thornsbury. Chad Thornsbury, the fullback, celebrating his 18th birthday today. To everybody 
on the team was on that tackle, Jeff. <laughs> that was Bobby D. Ramos, or rather I should say on the carry, but anyway, Chad Thornsberry, number 40, celebrating his 18th birthday today. Bobby D. Ramos, a gain of uh, two on the play, they call it. Call it second and eight now from the 37. This time, trap play, it goes to Ramos once again, and Bobby has yardage. It should be near first down territory. I'll tell you what, he was gone that time. It, you know, they had the one half back there, just got in by the shoelaces. Brockhoff was, was in position, or he was gone. Bobby DeRamus has the speed to go. He, he's very fast, he's very strong. DeRamus. Rated as one of the better running backs in the state, isn't he? And he yes, he is. And he's six foot 190 and just a junior, too. Bench presses 320 pounds, Cat. Ooh. <laughs> Matt Blair receiving some attention there from the official, and the give this time going once again. This is the Greg Hackney, the other halfback. Hackney gets it up to midfield. I thought he was going. The linebacker Richardson uh, caught him by the, by the shoelaces again. They did have the first down on the last play at the 45. A gain of four that time by Hackney to the 49-yard line. Second and six from the 49. And this time Blair back to pass. Looking, he's being chased out of the pocket. Now launches it downfield. It's gonna be picked off. Picked off by Louis Brockoff, the right cornerback for the Beachwood Tigers. 5'10", 170, and a junior. I'll tell you, that's the kind of things that really hurt in the ball game. You don't need that kind of a turnover this early. Poor decision. I think Matt should have turned that ball upfield, taken five or six yards, and, and let it go at that. Huh? Well, they were running the ball well, too, so, you know, this early in the game, they okay, well, probably need to get really rid of their jitters before they start doing too many things. I agree with you. So, Beachwood takes over, first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. 10-36 to play here in the first quarter. No score in the football game. One back in the backfield with a wide out to both sides, and back to pass is the quarterback. This is Rob Witt and Witten's pass incomplete and ten it out in the flat there for Jeff Lefton, one of the halfbacks. Well, he went in motion. He felt like he was open. Definitely, they didn't send a man. I didn't notice it. Did they send the, the defensive man with him? And no, no. They, well, the, the defensive man uh, came in with the receiver on a uh, sort of a look-in okay. pattern. He so was wide open. You can look for that again then. You certainly can. He was wide open. First opportunity will set the Beachwood defensive, offensively, I should say, for you. But the quarterback is number 10, Rob Witten. And motion is left in. And the give Richardson, the big middle, A.J. Richardson, number 32, six foot, 200 pound junior. Now he just as big as uh, the Pike Hotel back to Ramos, too. He got it up to about the 41 yard line. I don't think he has his quickness, but, but he does have the size. So they'll be facing a third and five from the 39 yard. Yes, 39. Beachwood with a left and in motion once again and Witten back to pass. Looking and firing. This is complete to left and left and knocked out of bounds at about the 46 yard line. Over there to knock him out of bounds for Pikeville. Robert Mims. Robbie, Robert Mims and Robbie also over there. Yeah, Chris McNamee. What they're doing on that, uh, Kevin, when they put that man in motion, they're playing a man uh, coverage with that linebacker. And he simply is not getting out there. That back's too quick for him. He can't, he can't cover that much ground. No, he can't. Mm -hmm. They got the first down at the 46, first and 10. Beachwood comes on the attack once again. They send wide outs to both sides. And one back in the backfield. And again, coming in motion, this is Mike Miller. And again, back to pass is Witten. It's incomplete. Jeff, yeah. they're using the... Uh, both ends are splitting out. They're using a double wing slot and just leaving the fullback in there to run. Of course, they're using the man in motion coming back through there, so that ends up with two men in the backfield most of the time. Incomplete pass. Witten is the quarterback. He's 6'10", 200, and a senior. In the backfield is Mike Miller. He's uh, one of the halfbacks, 6'2", 185, and a senior. The fullback is A.J. Richardson. He is 6'2", 200, a junior. And the other halfback is Jeff Lefton, 6'1", 170, and a junior. A timeout on the field. Pike Bull apparently calling the timeout. Did you say Witten was 6'10"? Witten, did I say that? <laughs> I don't know. 6'2", uh, excuse me. He's number 10, 6'2". Okay. Checking uh, Beachwood quickly across the line. The split in is Louis Brockoff, 5'10", 170, and a junior. The tackle is Dave Brossard, 6'2", 210, and a junior. The 
left guard is Goff Gabbard. He is a senior, 5'10", 170, and the center is Joe Heskamp, 5'11", 180, and a sophomore. The right guard is Roger Slagle, a senior, 5'10", 175. The right tackle is Chris Boat, a senior, 6'2", 215, and the tight end is 6'185", Scott Schroer, number 35, a junior. So that sets Beachwood defensively for you, and Pikeville, which we will get a chance to set defensively for you. At one end is Robbie Simpson, 6'205", and a senior. The tackle on the left side is Sean Neely, a junior, 6'3", The nose guard is Aaron Balzer, 6'4", 260, and a junior. The right tackle is Tim Honecker. He's 5'11", 245, and a junior. And Chad Thornsbury is the right defensive end, 5'10", 190, and a senior. We'll pick up the rest of Pikeville's defensive secondary in just a moment. Second and 10 situation for Beachwood. Witten back to pass, dumps it over the middle, incomplete, intended for Witten at the 50-yard line. The referee almost got hit in the head then, the umpire rather, right in behind the, uh, with the linebackers. He had the duck in order to miss the ball. That'll bring up a third and 10 now for Beachwood from their 46. The linebackers for Pikeville, Bobby DeRamus, number 42. One of the linebackers, six foot 190 and a junior. The other linebacker is Robert Mims, number 55, 5'10", 180 and a junior. The defensive backs after this play. Witten sending uh, Miller in motion again this time and the give going up the middle for Beachwood. I believe that was left and on the carry. Like Richardson, the fullback, got right, about nine yards. Okay, Richardson. A.J. Richardson, number 32 on the carry, got it up to the 45. Say eight yards, I guess, more like it. But not enough for the first down. So the Tigers will have to punt it away. Andy Best does the punting, number four. And there's the punt, nice punt. And it'll hit at the 10 yard line where it's taken in by Robbie Wright. Robbie Wright is dropped right there. No, he fumbles the football and they say Beachwood's got it. Well, a tough break for Pikeville and a big break for Beachwood. That was a 40 yard punt, Jeff. Andy Best really got a toe into it and Robbie Wright couldn't hang on to the football, so it's a turnover. And where is the football? It's on about the eight-yard eight line. Eight-yard line. It is on the eight-yard line. So, so, Jeff, they always told us the ball went behind that ten-yard line. Let it go. Go in the end zone. That's the safest thing to do. That's right, Chad. That's what they told me, too. Leave it alone. No score in this game. 8.42 to play here in the first quarter. Beachwood knocking on the door, though. First and ten from the eight-yard line. And there's the give to Miller. Miller down to the five-yard line, maybe inside that. The Miller picked up, looks like, what, five yards on that carry? Every bit of it, maybe give him four yards on it. Okay. You know, the bounce on that put, uh, Cat, looked pretty hot, too. I think it would have gone into the end zone. Pike would have had the ball at the 20-yard line. Right. Much farther, will it? They, I should say, they cannot pick up a first down. Of course, it's second and goal now from the four. And there's the give to Lefton, and he is in for the touchdown. So the, the Tigers capitalize on the mistake by Michael. And Michael has had two turnovers in this game that have hurt them. As Beachwood capitalizes on the second one, they were unable to do so on the first one, but they do the second time around as Lefton takes it in from four yards out, and Beachwood is on the scoreboard with 7.55 to play here in the first quarter. Jeff left in a five-yard run. I don't think Pikeville needs to get their head down. The way they were moving the ball there earlier, I think they'll be back in this game. I think they will, too, but I don't I don't, I don't look to see them put the ball in the air again for a while. <laughs> and that is Miller in to do the extra point attempt. It is no good. Sails off to the right. The extra point attempt. Could be a big no miss. Good. Good score. One point. Good yeah, that could, that could be the game. Well, it was uh, only a... Uh, two-play drive that went from the eight-yard line following the fumble by Wright, and Beachwood capitalizes, and they take a 6-0 lead with 7.55 to play here in the first quarter. So Beachwood will be back to kickoff once again. 
Michael started off with a nice drive there in their first series, but again, through the interception. We'll take a timeout before Beachwood kicks off here, and we'll be back with the score. Come back there as Beachwood kicks off to Pikeville, and Chad Thornsbury takes it to about the 40-yard line, so that's where Pikeville sets up first and 10 Jeff, from its own 40. Uh, Mike Miller's two kickoffs that he's had has only traveled about 30 yards, so he's not kicking it very deep. So Pikeville's ended up with good field position both times they've received the kickoff. Gain of two on the play by Pikeville there that time. On the run by Chad Thornsbury, number 40, celebrating his 18th birthday today. Gain of two, second and eight now for Pikeville from its 42. And there's the give and almost broken there by Greg Hackney. Gets it up to the 50 yard line. Well, that was a good effort on Hackney's part. He had been caught, wrapped up there after about a gain of one yard. And just two linebackers back. had him, and he, they just, did. he just kept squirming and got away from him. Greg's a hard runner. He's not very big, but he's a hard runner. He gives a great effort every time he has the ball. He's just a, sh a yard shy of the first down as they put it at the midfield. So it's third and one from the 50-yard line, and we have a official's timeout. Checking some equipment of one of the Beachwood Tigers. I think he has a knee brace on them. They wanted to keep it covered up. It's supposed to be covered. So the Panthers looking for a first down. Third and one from right at midfield. And there's the give to Hackney. Lots of running room. He broke this one. He's at the 30. One man to beat. And Andy Best breaks him down at the 18-yard line. It's an excellent run. A good defensive play on that back. Uh, of course, the ball carrier had been a little patient there. He had a blocker with him, but he, the blocker never could get in front of him. If he'd have just slowed up a step, he could have walked into the end zone. That's there. right. You've got to use your blockers. Right. Still a nice 30-yard pickup by Greg. Good play. 30-yard gain takes it all the way down to the Beachwood 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Panthers. Nice run by Hackney. This time, the call going in the backfield to Tim Honecker who will run in and out at the uh, one of the positions in the backfield. So he looks like a small refrigerator. <laughs> Honecker, <laughs> Honecker just 5'11", 245, and a, and a junior. He's Pikeville's version of the refrigerator. Would have to be. Uh, gain of two on the play, second and eight from the 18. And this time, again, going to DeRamus, and Bobby gets it down to about the five-yard line. I tell you, Bro Broknoff came in and made a beautiful tackle. Of course, he just knocked him down. He took his legs out from under him. He didn't tackle him. He just a cross body block on his legs. That's the best way to tackle Bobby DeRamus. He's a real strong 190-pound halfback. I tell you, he does. as quick as he is, he looks like a little guy. He does. <laughs> I think he runs about a 4 6 40. That's excellent speed. Panthers from the wishbone this time. DeRamus gets the call, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. One yard, one yard short. Now check it out. One he yard is, short. He is just one yard shy. Looked like he was into the end zone easily, but he is brought down at the one yard line. One man had a shot at him. He just stepped over top of it. <laughs> Did get the first down, though. First and 10 from the one. Let's see who head coach Hillard Howard calls on in this situation. This time with a power eye to the right. And DeRamus gets the call. He's in for the touchdown. And we have a tie game. Well, we're seeing a different football game in this one than we saw in the first one. A game that could be an offensive field game. I think Pike was just going to go get their one point now and get the lead. They don't need to try two and put it back in the... <laughs> they don't need to pass either, can no, no. <laughs> The first series, it looked like they had the running game in good shape. And yeah, of course, yes, the one is. pass got them in trouble. But they're all right, I think. Mike McCoy will be on to try the extra point, put the Panthers in the lead. You got a picture for you? It's down and it's up, and let's see if it is good. So good. No, it's not, and we're tied in this football game. As Looks like a duplicate of the, on the other end. It just squibbed out to the right. Yeah. McCoy missed the extra point, just like Beachwood did on the other end. And well, we have us a tie game, six all between the Panthers and the Tigers here from our second game tonight at the Pike County Bowl. 
Off to a good start. Yeah, I've seen everything. That drive by the Panthers covering 60, 60 yards. yards. 60 yards. You know, as Cat pointed out, uh, both times the up back from Pikeville has, has uh, received the kickoff because of its shortness and has had to only run about 10 yards to get the ball in great field position. Ramos capped it off with a one yard run. Seven plays, 60 yards. And we're tied at six nothing as they missed the extra point. And Pikeville ready to punt it away to Beachwood once again. Or I guess I should say for the first time. Kick it away. Clock stop, 5.17 to play here in the first quarter. We're tied at six all. And again, McCoy moves on the football. It's a short kick be taken in by one of the short men for Beachwood. That's A.J. Richardson, and Richardson picks up maybe five yards on the play, and he's dropped down at his 30-yard line. Jeff, I saw three maroon shirts out in the field after that tackle was over. That tells me there was eight guys in on the tackle, so they're all going for the ball well. Beachwood begins to drive at their own 30-yard line, first and 10 from the Tigers' 30. And again, this time they go with the I formation with a slot to the right. With back to pass, looking, lots of time, firing, and this will be overthrown. Intended for Jeff Lefton coming out of the backfield. Well, that was a strange pattern. They tried to cross and got mixed up down there, but uh, I think the Beachwood receiver had a, 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 a foot or two on the defender, didn't he, Cat? Well, he had the position and he had a step. If it had been a good pass, he, he could have caught that, I think. Pikeville's defensive backfield, we didn't get a chance to set it for you earlier. The At one defensive halfback is Chris McNamee, a senior, 6'1", 210. The other one is Tim Sanders, 5'11", 175, and a sophomore. And the safeties are Jody Brown, 5'10", 150, and a junior, and Robbie Wright, 5'11", 170, and a senior. And this time, Witten is thrown for a loss. We have flags on the play. I think we had a face guard on Witten. That's about the only thing it could have been because the, right. they had three maroon jerseys on the quarterback. So, uh, well, it's a shame when you've got the guy corralled like that. Somebody grabs a face guard. Uh, well, he's just trying to get a hold of him. I don't think right. he intended to do that. Oh, no. I'm sure the kid didn't. But. It is face mask. Call like going against Pikeville, and it'll be marked off. A big 15-yarder after he was dropped for a, a loss. That gives him the first down. First and 10 from the 42, Beachwood zone 42. First and 10. Clock moving with 444 to play here in the first quarter. And the game tied, six all. In motion is Miller. And on the trap play, left and gets the call. Gets it to maybe the 45. Trying to run a little misdirection play there, Jeff. Catch Pike will go going one way and run the ball back the other. The right linebacker there, Robert Mim, stayed at home and he didn't take that fake. And made a good tackle, but the back carried him about three yards. They give him a gain of four, call it second and six from the 46. Witt sending left and in motion this time. Number five, you see, you see him going to the top of your screen. And the give. Should be Richardson, Richardson, their fullback, yes. Number 32, A.J. Richardson. Jimmy. And they get a, pick up a couple of yards that time. It is a gain of two, third and four now from the 48. For Beachwood. Wide outs to both sides with that spread with slots at both sides, and this time Miller in motion. And Witten firing over the middle or complete in the right flat. That is to Scott Schroer, number 35, is tied in. That was an excellent pass by Witten. Jody Brown had good coverage there. He came up on the ball, but Witten put it low and, and away from the defender. So that really there was no play. Excellent throw and excellent catch. It's complete to the 49-yard line. So a game of a 
a gain of six on the play and another first down for Beachwood. First and ten from the high, I should say, 44-yard line. A gain of about eight on the play, I should say. First and ten from the 44 for Beachwood at the Pikeville 44-yard line. I tell you, I think I think you're going to see just from what I've noticed here this far in the ball game, Beachwood's going to throw that ball a lot tonight. Whit can throw it. If I had a quarterback like that, Excellent I would too. throw there. He threw the ball low, so the man he can catch it, or it'd be, it's hard to intercept a pass like that. So. Right. I think two catch. You can see from their uh, formation when they line up, uh, they're geared to throw the football. Well, they only have one running back. That's, that's right. <laughs> in position, so they're going to run. They're going to throw it a lot. Witt usually has several receivers to, to consider. They they put everybody out there. That's the first pass he's completed, though, isn't it? Uh, no, he, he threw a sweet pass oh, and he completed okay, the quick one. There you see head coach Bernie Barry, the Beachwood Tigers, in the with no cap on. The tall guy there. Bernie in his 13th season at Beachwood. And it's interesting, these two teams last year would have met each other if Pikeville had gotten past Cumberland in the playoff game played here last year. Cumberland beat the Panthers 14 to 8 and then Cumberland then, then faced Beachwood. The Tigers traveled down to Cumberland last November and lost to Ron Kane and his Cumberland Redskins 14 to 13. We saw Cumberland's coach here earlier tonight. They yeah, had a big win last night. In fact, his next game, we didn't mention earlier, his game, the next game for Corbin is against Cumberland next week in Corbin, or I should say at Cumberland. Back to action. This is Witten handing off the left and left and trying to find some room. Gets up to maybe the 43-yard line. Chris McNamee came all the way up from his defensive halfback position to make the first hit on the Beachwood back. They give him a gain of three on the play to the 41. Second and seven now from the 41 for Beachwood. Pikeful precious is being quick. They look quicker than they Beachwood. are quick and they have good pursuit. 2.39 to play here in the first quarter. We're tied six all. Miller in motion. Dropping back to pass and looking and he is going to be sworn. Now that's the best pass defense you can have, Cat. Right. Sean Neely, the left tackle back there to sack Witten, along with the right tackle, Tim Honecker. It looks like he lost, uh, what? Lost eight, of yards. eight yards on the play, all the way back to the 49. And that will make it third and 15 for Beachwood from their, from the uh, Pikeville 49 yard line. Clock winding down under a minute to play here in the first quarter. Left and in motion this time, and we will have flags on the play. Delay a game. Hey, Robert! The back judge threw his flag and blew his whistle, so that's usually exceeding the 25 second count. Beachwood will be charged with delay of game. So it's the first time we've seen that penalty called in this game. You know, that right linebacker for Pike was not getting outside on that on that motion, man, as, as he should. And the defensive back had about a 15 or 20 yard cushion there. Had they not been called for delay of game, they would have picked up 15 yards on that. They, Pike was going to have to work on how to cover that because they it's, certainly it's are. definitely not, uh, the man's not covered well. No, I think the linebacker's going to have to pick that motion man up a little quicker than they are. That makes it third and 20 now from the 46. Beachwood back in its own territory and went back to pass. That screen. Dumps it over the middle to Miller and Miller gets Ooh. up to near midfield and boy he has swarmed there. Hey. Chris McNamee Bobby in on the tackle. Chris did an excellent job diagnosing that screen and again coming up from his defensive halfback position to make the first hit. Chris is a, about 6'2", 190 pounds and he can put a good lick on you. So Beachwood will have to punt it away. That's best to do the punting. And it'll hit at the 16 yard line and roll inside all the way down to about the five, six yard line. And they down it right there. So Pikeville will start out deep in its own territory on this drive. That's a 40 yard kick, Jeff. The a boomer. At the Seven field seconds to play here in the first line. quarter. The Panthers will take over. Michael will take over. 
with seven seconds to play here in the first quarter. Boy, he tried to field one he shouldn't have, and he probably should have fielded that. Well, I think the last one kind of got him probably a little leery of, of filling those things. I'm sure it did. First and ten from the six. As Blair brings him up, and the give going to Greg Hackney. Hackney finding, finding the going rough. But Richardson's very active on the defensive side as well as, as carrying that football from the fullback position, Jeff. He was in on that tackle. They give Hackney a gain of three on the play. Call it second and seven from the nine. As I had misread the clock earlier, apparently there was a minute seven left in the first. We got some lights out on the scoreboard. That's the problem. <laughs> That's right. That, uh, when it's one, it looks like zero. All right, 23 seconds, clock winding down. And that play right there may very well do the first quarter. Tell you, it was some kind of a mix-up in the backfield or something. And they lost uh, back to the original line of scrimmage on that play. And it'll be third and 10 back to the six. And I don't think that Pikeville will get another playoff. In fact, they won't as the first quarter comes to an end here in the Pike County. Pikeville National Bank third annual Pike County Bowl. And we'll go to the other end with the football as Pikeville and Beachwood are tied six all here in this football game. And as we change into the field, we'll step out for this. Now the Pikeville Panthers backed up deep in their territory, third and 10 from their own six yard line. As we begin this second quarter of football, we're tied at six all. Thank you for joining us this afternoon at WIMG for the third annual Pikeville National Bank Pike County Bowl. I'm Jeff Frankel along with Cat Size 4 and Neil Smith. We thank you for joining us for this football extravaganza. Blair back to pass, but instead hands off to Hackney, and Hackney gets it up to the 15-yard line. Roger Slagle was the one that zeroed in on him there and made the tackle, Jeff. It's a good draw play right up the middle. It certainly was. A nine-yard pickup, just about a yard short of the first down, but I think they'll have to kick on a fourth down situation at their own 15-yard line. They needed to get out to the 16, and the ball rests at the 15-yard line, and let's see if they'll punt it away. Oh, they're going to go for it, apparently. She whiz. Well, this is a big play here. <laughs> Fourth and one, and maybe they're hoping that they can draw Beachwood off sides, and now they call a timeout, and there's a flag on the play. Let's see. Somebody Ooh. might have jumped, and they say the nose guard, which would be Tim Dorn, the nose tackle, I should say, for Beachwood, they jumped off sides. That would be encroachment if it's, he doesn't have to jump off sides. He just get in that neutral Apparently zone. Apparently he lined up in the neutral zone. Cat in, uh, in college now, do you have to make a, a contact? In or college, the defensive man can move in the neutral zone. In fact, he could go to the backfield if he could get back on his side before the ball was snapped. But in high school, it's it's they call it in, in Offsides or encroachment. encroachment. Yes. There you, there no you. contact, it's still a penalty. Yes. And there was the indication in it. And in fact, neither team can get in that neutral zone. Pikeville felt that that's what they could do, draw the Tigers offsides, and they did. So they have it first and 10 from their 20, and they keep this drive going. The give goes to Hackney. Hackney up to about the 23 yard line. Like Slagle was in on the initial tackle. Give him a gain of four. Oh, it's second and six from the 24s. I don't know about Pikeville, but I noticed that Beachwood, uh, most of these kids play both ways. I'll tell you, by the end of the game, they're going to be a tired group of kids. Pikeville does the same thing. That time, Blair overthrowing his intended receiver out in the flat, intended for Robbie Wright to split in. Of course, with Class A schools, as small as they are anyway, you're going to see a lot of kids going both ways. I think Beachwood probably only has less than 150 kids in the upper three grades, so they're very small school. Very small school. I think Coach Bernie Berry told me he would dress probably 40 players for this game. But he is uh, does not have a lot of depth, though. He lost a lot of people from last year's club as well. This time the get ball going to DeRamus. DeRamus up near the 25-yard line, but they're going to be well short of a first down. Picked up maybe a yard. It'll bring up third and five from the 26. 
tell you what, with a fine running back like DeRamus, they throw that one pass and that puts them in the hard position. If they could run him two or three times, they've got a first down. That's right, he and Hackney both. Sean Neely in the punt. And the ball hits at the 49, takes a pikeful bounce, rolls all the way down to the 40, I should say 36 yard line, and there the Panthers down it. I tell you, Best, best was kicking the ball well, and well, this pike was punt though. They come that if the kid had the right angle at the punt there, he could have blocked it, but he went too deep. Yeah, Neely took all day to punt that ball. The kid came in from the side and then almost still almost blocked it. But uh, if he had taken the right angle, he would have gotten it. I think so. Well, Beachwood takes over first and ten from its own 36-yard line with just under 10 minutes to play here in the first half. We're tied at six all. Beachwood scored first and Pikeville scored just a little bit later in the first quarter and both teams missed their extra point attempts. And now Beachwood calls a timeout. Head coach Bernie Berry calling a timeout and will come onto the field. He's got a new uh, fullback in there. Young man Tom Dorn. Number eight. He's 5'6", 160 pound sophomore. He, he's not, <laughs> they're coming down about 40 or 50 pounds from uh, Richardson. Ranked. Back up, back up. In the AP poll, the preseason ranking number three this season. That's Miller in motion, and Witten back to pass once again, and firing incomplete, intended for Witten. That's that same pass right. again. Uh, the man in motion, he has 10 to 15 yards between him and the nearest defender, so if they can ever complete the pass, he's gone. It's been there every time, Cat. It's it was, been there every time. It was intended for Miller and just went right out of his hands. Uh, he probably looked up field and saw what he had in front of him. I think he did. <laughs> So it brings up a second and 10 from the 36. As Witten at the control, sending left and in motion this side, this time to the near side, and on the misdirection that goes to Miller and nothing there. Sean is, Neely and Tim Honaker in on the tackle. I tell you, those tackles in this uh, nickel defense for Pikeville. They have really stopped the run on the inside. They have shut down uh, Beachwood's running game. Uh, Beachwood, I think, will have to throw to have any success. Talking about those rankings, Beachwood came out ranked third in the AP while Pikeville did not receive votes, or did not get in the top 10, but however, did receive votes uh, in the Class A poll. And Bernie Barry couldn't understand why his team was so highly ranked from what they lost last year. The pitch goes to left and left and oh, oh. is dropped on the outside. A nice play by Tim Sanders coming up from his halfback position to drop left and. That's a beautiful defensive play on his part. I tell you, Timmy showed a lot of quickness there coming up from that position and making that play when he first pitched the ball. It looked like a big gainer. Well, that's a very difficult tackle to make out there in, the, in open field with this one man and he can give you a head fake and do lots of things to get around you. So Beachwood will have to punt the football away, but apparently they don't have everybody on the field that they need. Apparently a man's short, so they'll call a timeout instead of take the penalty. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but I see some lightning in the background. I uh -oh. <laughs> hope that's heat. <laughs> uh, you're exactly right. Pretty nice evening. It's comfortable. I didn't bring my hat or my raincoat. Maybe they'd let us go downstairs. We're located on top of the press box here at the Hambly Athletic Complex, and, uh, well, if it rains, we're in trouble. Did you bring your umbrella? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, we'll take a break with uh, 8.33 to play here in the second quarter, and we're still tied between the Beachwood Tigers and the Pikeville Panthers at 6-all. Well, there's some fans way across the way over at the uh, baseball field, oh, and here is up over his Beachwood head. trying to punt the football away. It's snapped over Best head, but he goes back and gets it and gets off a pretty nice punt. It'll roll down to about the 36-yard line. It's about a 28-yard punt, uh, <laughs> Jeff. Of course, he, the ball snapped 10 yards over his head. So Best, an excellent job. Nobody was after him, and Best went back and got it and was able to get a pretty nice punt off anyway. Well, with good field position, Pike was more intent on setting up a return, I think, than they were trying to put the rush on. Apparently so. If they'd had a rush, it would have been big trouble for Beachman. Oh, yes. So Pikeville will start out first and 10 from its own 36-yard line, 8.23 to play 
here in the second quarter. Tie game six all. And a loose football, and I believe still loose football, and Beachwood may have recovered. Just like the white jersey got it. Well, there was a mix-up in the backfield that time. Matt Blair was looking for the pitch man, and there, he wasn't there. Beachwood has got it. Coming up off the bottom of the pile, number five. Okay, Lop Jeff Lefton. Lefton. He seems to be everywhere, doesn't he? He does. He has been around the football a lot, and that's the third turnover in this game for Pikeville. And I'm sure that's something that head coach Hillard Howard cannot be pleased with is too many turnovers. As you see the Pikeville brain trust there on the sideline. Head coach Hillard Howard in his 16th season as head coach. But now Beachwood will take over. 7.43 to play here in the second quarter from the 30, well, I should say 42 yard line. There's Wright firing out in the flat. That is complete to Louis Brockoff, the split end. Boy, great reaction by Timmy Sanders and Jody Brown to come in and close that thing down for no gain when it looked like it would be a gainer. It, it did. It looked like the motion man turned up field too quickly then. They yes. Got, on that. They got maybe a yard out of it. Not, they said they didn't get a thing out of it, so call it second and ten. It looked good. It, de it was developing well, but Pikeville very quickly there to close it down. Watch for Beachwood to come back with that motion man again later and fake to that out man and throw deep. This time a single back and left and coming in motion to the near side and with putting it up intended for and almost Ooh. caught. That is Brock off once again and Louie almost drug that one in. Beautiful pass, just inches long. The Brock off. I thought it was overthrown, but he made a super effort to get to the ball and almost caught it. He certainly did. That was a great effort. Rock off 5'10", 170, and a junior. The split end just couldn't bring it in, so it, it seems brings to be up. Uh, the big man in the backfield is missing. He may be hurt. Richardson? A.J. Richardson, number 32, the fullback. No one went off the field injured, but... No, no, he, this, this kid has been in there the last But apparently series. he could be hurt. Left in... And Miller are the backs in the I formation. And Witten back to pass, looking and firing. Boy, a beautiful spiral and incomplete. That kid's got an arm. He does. He's got a cannon, and it was intended for Jeff Lefton, and Lefton just couldn't run into that one. He's got a flag down, Jeff. I, I don't know what it might be, but it was thrown a, on the snap. We'll get a preliminary signal right here from the referee. He's trying to find out now what it is. Maybe offsides on motion. Motion the offense. on Beachwood. So they'll refuse that, I would say. They should refuse it because it'll bring up a fourth down if they refuse it in 10. If they take, it'll be third and 15. I'm sure they'd much rather have the fourth down, and they do decline it as you see the official indication. Fourth and 10 from the 42 for Beachwood, and they'll have to punt this one away. Andy Bess, number four. That's the punny. 6.50 to play here in the second quarter. We're tied, six all. Best, looks like he's angling for the corner and hits at about the 20 yard line, rolls to the five and on down inside to near the two yard line and Beachwood is there to cover it. Unbelievable. Hey, Pikeville. Pikeville is really, they haven't handled the punts very well at all. Tonight. They haven't touched one. <laughs> Except one, and they bubbled it. Now you see head coach Hillard Howard just a moment ago encouraging his troops on. Cat, I think you're right. They, uh, they've they become uh, very hesitant about the punt receiving after that fumble by Robbie Wright on the first punt. And I'm sure they're, they're leery of it. They're afraid that they're going to mess up, and, of course, they're messing up in the process of trying to keep from it. <laughs> That's right. They have it well at the put. three yard line. First and 10, they set up very deep from their own territory. And there's a nice run by Hackney who gets it out to about the 11. Nice run by Hackney. About an eight yard pickup. Get off your knees, made by Alex Spears in there. Second and two from the 11. As you see the clock winding down here in the first half and a tie score at six all. First game won by Belfry over Corbin, 14 to 10. And it was a dandy. Give that time went to Thornsbury. Chad may have the first down. Go ahead. 
He does. Give him a gain of three on the play. First and 10 from the 14 for the Panthers. Blair calling the signals. Handing off the hack to and Greg finding some running room to get to the cross the 25 yard line. Nice running room by Greg Hackney, the 5'10", 170 junior. Very shifty back, uh, and, and then when he is corralled, he'll put his head down and get a couple of extra yards. Gets it across the 25 to the 26, and another first down for Pikeville. First and 10 from the 26 on the move here in the second quarter. They send wideouts to this side. Give goes to Hackney. Hackney's across midfield up through the 48-yard line into Beachwood territory. Hackney from the 26, his own 26, to across midfield to the 48, a gain of 16 yards. Andy Bass saved the touchdown. Yeah, I see they're working 26 on, yards. I'm sorry, yeah. you're absolutely right. Uh, they're working on, a, on one of their players on the bench over on the sideline, and it may be Richardson because he hasn't been out there on offense or defense. Either one. But that's their big man in the backfield. If they lose him, that'll really weaken their offense. Since you pointed that out, Cat, I was looking for him on the sidelines, too, and he hasn't been standing on the sidelines. Well, so they normally, him. he normally plays the linebacking spot, too. He's one of their primary people on offense and defense. He's on the sidelines, number 32. I see him standing over there, so apparently maybe uh, maybe some type of injury. Well, a small Class A school really misses one player like that. Right. This is the first time these two teams have met since 1984. That's when Beachwood went all the way to win the Class A title over Paris. They met right here in Pikeville, and... Beachwood won that football game and went on to win the state title that year. But Coach Hillard Howard does own one victory over Beachwood. He, I think it was in 1972 that uh, they met Beachwood. And so that's the record. Bernie Barry is 1-0 versus Hillard Howard, while Hillard Howard is 1-1 one one versus Beachwood. We're ready to go again. First and 10 from the 48. And the give again, this time to Chad Thornsberry, is across the 45 to maybe the 44. All right, Scott Shore is the, was the man who made the tackle in. A pick up a five on the play for Thornsbury. Second and five now from the 43 for Pikeville. And again, the call goes to Thornsbury, but not as much there this time for Chad. Got it to maybe the 41. So a gain of two, call it third and three for Pikeville. Since the first pass interception, the Blair threw Pike was very conservative, keeping the ball on the ground, and really not even going wide on the ground. And this is a very nice drive they sustained here. It started at their own three-yard line. They were deep in the shadow of their own goal post, but have it now well into Beachwood territory. And here's Hackney. He breaks one off right tackle, and he could be gone. Best can't catch him. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. A beautiful run. Junior. For a 170 pound back, he can take a lick pretty good and stay on his feet. Well, he has good balance. He keeps those feet turning. Yeah, most running backs, uh, the good ones, will do that. You can turn them upside down, their little old knees will still be churning. <laughs> that's right. That, that's a quality the good running backs have. That caps off a seven play, 97 yard drive. Not bad at all. And it gives Pikeville the lead, and they're going to go for a two point conversion here. Uh, Blair with a little trouble with the football and tries to throw into the end zone to DeRamus, but it's batted away, and the two-point conversion fails. But the Pikeville Panthers have taken the lead here over the Beachwood Tigers in this second game of the Pike County Bowl on a 41-yard run by Greg Hackney, and they have the lead now 12-6. That was 
Jeff Lefton again to save that two-pointer with an excellent defensive play, batting that ball down. I tell you, Lefton is a fine little football player. He's everywhere. <laughs> I, uh, have you, have you, can you figure out what's happened to Pikeville's big running back? They seem to have taken him out of the game here the last few minutes. Well, I, I, I don't think that he's injured. Uh, of course, Hackney certainly has picked up the load, but right. I think even when DeRamus was in there, they were running Hackney uh, quite a bit of the time. They're maybe using him as a decoy. They may well be. Well, the Panthers are ready to kick off to the Tigers with a lead 12-6, 4-14 to play here in the half. And that is Mike McCoy with a kick and coming up to take it is Miller. Or I should say coming up to take it this time is Louis Brockoff and Brockoff gets it up to about his 30 yard line. So he started to head back outside. He may have had something if he hadn't lost his balance. Gets it up to, they put it down at the 29 we'll call it. So first and 10 from the 29 Beachwood sets up shop with 4.08 to play. Here in the half, Beachwood trailing for the first time in the football game, 12 to six. Wright brings them up. They've gone high to an formation. eye formation. Yes, they have. A slot to this side, and the give goes to Lefton. Oh, man. Lefton, lots of running room. Gets it across the 40 and knocked out of bounds over there, about the 43-yard line. Well, Pike went with the uh, flow that time and really sucked in on that motion to the left side. Did he get 10 yards that time? I think he got just that 10, Cat. Picked up a first down. He had to. He started out at the 29-yard line, so he got it across about a 13-yard pickup. They put it down at the... 42, uh, I should say 42, that's correct. First and 10 from the 42, a 13 yard gain for left and again an eye formation, slot to the far side. Little misdirection and right back to pass, looking downfield and he overthrows Louis Brockoff once again. They ran the same play, except they just faked it. That's right. That time, and of course the man was wide open. They play exactly in the defensive back, but Michael never picked him up until it was past him. Well. Brockner was all by himself. <laughs> he certainly was. If Witten could lay that ball out there a little more softly. Yeah, he's trying to trying to throw a rope to him rather than just. Yeah, he's, he's done that a couple of times tonight. I don't know if it's possible, but he might have too much arm. Right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> so it brings up a first, in, I should say second and 10 from the 42 now for the Tigers. Again, that eye formation a wide out to this side. That's Brockoff. And the give goes on a delay to Miller, and he finds lots of room across midfield, down to about the 47. Looks like he's picked up 11 yards. He has the first down to the 47-yard line. A pickup of 11. First and 10 to the 47-yard line of Pikeville. 3.28 to play here in the first half, and we're, well, Be Beachwood with a drive, trailing 12-6 in the game. And in the middle that time, the ball going to, boy, we are getting some strong. We, we are getting ready are. to get a heck of a rain, fellas. It's right behind us. It's going to be here in two or three minutes. Ooh. What do we do now, Coach? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Circle the way. Half time yet. <laughs> oh, run that clock. Here it comes. Oh, boy. Here we go. If we can get the half time, we'll be all right. This is right. Looking and firing incomplete intended for Andy Bass. And now we have a flag on the play. Could be a I'd late say, hit. I'd say we've got him rough in the past. Well, yeah. that is a late hit. Mm-mm. Uh oh. Well, that that helps Beachwood a lot. Clock is stopped with 2:33 to play. Is that a 10 or 15 yarder, Cat? That's 15. Automatic, Automatic first. Automatic first. And it'll be a big break. 
for the Beachwood Tigers. And there you see how stiff the wind is blowing as you see the flag here at Hampley Field. And I hope is, they have this, this press box anchored well. <laughs> I do too. If this were a baseball Ooh. game and the wind was blowing out, we may blow off here before it's all over with. But a big break for the Beachwood Tigers takes the ball all the way down to the 31 yard line. First and 10 from the 31 for Beachwood. Clark stopped with 2.33 to play. Eye formation again for the Tigers. With a slot to this side. And a little mix up on the exchange. I think Beachwood got it back. Uh, Witt fell on it. May have lost a yard. He in the center, just a little miscommunication. He's probably trying to come out too quickly. Oh, I felt the drop. Okay, we got to get some bags down here. Ball down at the Where's my bag? 32. Right. A loss of one on the play. Second and 11 from the 32 I need a bag for Beachwood. Back to pass. Is oh. Witten and firing incomplete. That was intended over the middle. I'll tell you what, this press box is moving. <laughs> I, don't, I don't doubt it a bit. We need to be. <laughs> they shut the hatch on us over uh -oh. here. <laughs> we're in trouble now. Folks, we're getting some nasty weather. Don't worry about that. Go give me a plastic bag. And I think my... <laughs> Enough strong wind behind us, though, and we do have some strong wind. This thing might just blow over us. I don't know. I'll tell you what, I can stand the rain better than I can the wind. <laughs> we need the rain, that's for sure. You know, I started to bring my hat tonight, but I didn't want to be a pessimist. <laughs> I'd rather be an idiot. <laughs> well, we might be able to. Well, we've got 150 left in the first half. If we can weather the storm for that long. They don't call any more timeouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, head for cover. Even the coaches are leaving the, uh, <laughs> the press spotters. Box. Yeah. Let's see. Timeout on the field. Clock stop with a minute 50 to play. 12-6. Beachwood calling the timeout, trailing 12-6 and trying to drive. Break me a hole, right? Right here, right here, right here. Right here. Folks, this is not an easy situation we're having here tonight. Not at all. We've got a flag back there by the quarterback, and I, I didn't see any face mask or anything. It may have been a holding. Either face mask or holding. I, uh, he's got a holding. Jordan. Jordan. The Beachwood Tigers will be assessed the penalty. Clock stop with a minute 44 to play here in the first half. 12-6 football game. And check out the penalty as you see the officials talking with Pikeville. They gave the preliminary signal as holding against Beachwood. Was that third down? It is holding. I think that was third down and Pikeville would decline the penalty. Okay. Jordan. They do decline Jordan. the penalty. So it'll bring up fourth down and 11. They've already moved the stake, hadn't they? So it should be with fourth and 16 now. Fourth and 15, you're right. Okay. So Witten with a wide out both sides. Look for Beachwood to pass here. Witten back to pass, looking and firing complete this time to Brock off and he'll go on right into the end zone for the touchdown. The pass was completed to Brock off at about the 20 yard line. He had just one man to beat and he was able to do so. And he goes on in for the touchdown. 
36 yards, Jeff. A 36-yard touchdown pass from Witt to Brockoff, and Beachwood has tied this football game up. A minute 22 to play here in the second quarter. Witt to Brockoff on a 35-yard pass play. And they'll go for just a one-point conversion. And no, they'll fake it. And Best looking in the end zone, and there he has Lefton for the two-point conversion. Beautiful play. That one was definitely designed. The Best is a quarterback. He's listed on the roster as a quarterback, so oh, that, that's an excellent... He's a backup quarterback to Witten. Of course, the snap was bad, but it, it'd be hard to say. The coach would have to tell you what, whether they intended to do that or not. I think they did, because your receiver was there, and it seemed to be he was there very intentionally. And that's a big two-point conversion. Certainly is, and it gives Beachwood the lead now 14 to 12 with the two-point conversion. With a minute 22 to play as the first half is winding down here from the Pike Bowl National Bank, Pike County Bowl. Well, at least the wind's died down a little bit now, so maybe we... <laughs> That's right. Maybe we won't get blown off the press box. We, we definitely need rain, but we don't need it here in the next couple of hours. No. <laughs> to move on to football is best no, it's a squibber this time that will be finally picked up and Pike Bull has it to about the 37 yard line Robbie Robbie Simpson Robbie Simpson they had a new kicker that time yes they did we'll have to check him out Pikeville takes over first and 10 from its 38 yard line. A minute 12 to play. That was Middendorf, the, the new kicker. Okay. Jeff Middendorf. Middendorf. And a pass incomplete. That one intended for DeRamus. Incomplete at the 42 yard line. Miller on the coverage for Beachwood. Bobby DeRamus was open on that play, Jeff, but. Uh, Matt Blair, the quarterback, just threw it behind him and made it very difficult for him to catch the ball. Clock stops with a minute three to play here in the first half. Best looks like a center fielder now instead of a safety man. Neil, he's playing a little extra deep. That's smart. Beachwood with a two-point lead, 14 to 12, and back to pass once again. Best man. Blair's really out of, airing it out. Oh. Best almost had it. In fact, he should have. Just fell off his fingertips. Right in his hands. Pass was intended for Robbie Wright, number 10, who was downfield. Well, those are the, the, the kind that are fun to intercept for defensive back. He could have run around for 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> the quarterback messed up. He threw it over the wrong shoulder. That's right. <laughs> and you know something about that, don't you, Neil? Oh, yes. <laughs> Neil playing safety in his career at Vanderbilt for three years. Have a, a few career interceptions? A few. A few. A few. <laughs> High formation and the boy this play develops. Somebody's in the neutral zone here on this side. No, mouth, it must be a mouthpiece violation. He gave the illegal equipment signal, so more than likely someone forgot to put their mouthpiece in. And they'll mark it off. Five-yard penalty. Maybe one of the receivers trying to get some wind since he ran the long pass pattern <laughs> the last time. <laughs> Clock stop, 56 seconds to play here in the first half. Heichel facing a third and 15 from their own 33. And again, Blair back to pass and looking, and at this time it is picked off, picked off over the middle. That is Roger Slagle coming up with it. And Slagle all the way 
down to the 23-yard line where he is knocked out of bounds. Well, with 40 seconds left, uh, Beachwood's got an opportunity to maybe get a field goal, maybe a touchdown. Well, they have time, definitely have time. If, you know, if they want to gamble and, and try to score, yes. Yeah, not, not a, a great gamble, though, on your own 23. Of course, they get the ball back second half, too, so they don't have to panic, but I tell you, the way Witt can throw that football, we need to take a timeout with a break in the action here with uh, 40 seconds to play. Timeout on the field, and the score is Beachwood leading Pikeville 14 to 12. Into celebration, the right look, the right price, the right store for back to school. The fashion bus stops at Daw Hairs. Well, how can you create what we missed while we were away, but... <laughs> We can't we run it back. <laughs> we can't run it back because we didn't have anything rolling, but uh, Beachwood just scored on that first play from scrimmage as quarterback Jeff, Witt, I think Roddy Witt dropped back and fired complete over the middle to Louis Brockoff for a touchdown. And on to add the extra point is Miller. It's good. And the Beachwood Tigers take a 19 I'm sorry, make it 21-12. Now we get it straight. 21-12 lead over the Pikeville Panthers before the first half comes to an end. Jeff, we had some technical difficulties there. It wasn't us that missed this thing. No. At all. You had some problems. I think the weather here has, has caused some problems, so uh, we're sorry we missed that one. On that last play that they missed, the uh, rock off the uh, left wide receiver just went down and ran a post pattern and split the two defensive backs. And I think they had some confusion, and neither one picked him up. Right. Just got in that seam, and nobody covered it. That's right. Well, evidently they were playing a zone defense. Shouldn't and. No one went to the ball. Yeah, I, that, I think that right halfback's got to take that kid across the middle if there's not another receiver in that area. Of course, yeah. pass defense is one of the hardest things to teach. It's all, it is Very the difficult. toughest thing to teach, I believe. Beachwood kicking it off, and Pipe will coming up with it. And with the football for Pipe, we'll have to check our numbers. Jimmy Sanders, one of the, the plays on the defensive backfield for Pikeville, picked it up and carried it back to about the 40-yard line. Le reason we're a little slow to react on identifying names and numbers. We've got everything well covered at this moment. Fear of rain. Beachwood's in their prevent defense. And Blair completes it to Doramus. Doramus has stood up at about the 43-yard line. At this point, with Beachwood in that prevent defense, I think Pike was just trying to hit a short man out there, particularly one like uh, like this man, and let him run with the football. Left and stood him up at about the 43-yard line, but it's a first down, first and 10 for Pikeville from the Beachwood 43-yard line with 14 seconds of play in the half. Blair again back to pass. He's looking long and puts it up in the air. And complete a beautiful pass reception. Coming down with it, Robbie Wright. And the ball was batted, and Wright came down with it. They should have called timeout. If not, they need to get on the line. The time will start as Eight. soon as they place the ball, unless they call time. Eight seconds remaining. Okay, Pikeville did call timeout. They did call a timeout with eight Pikeville seconds remaining. To Pikeville. And the pass all the way down to the 11-yard line. Good concentration on Robbie Wright's part to receive that ball. I, I think it was tipped by the Beachwood defender. Was Rockoff was yes, in it was. position to intercept it. Yes, just, he was. In fact, he did hit it. Now, I think he caught it on the rebound. He did. As a matter of fact, I think Robbie was on his back when he caught it. They bumped, but right. you know, both boys were going for the ball, so therefore, no good, interference. Good no call. Right. So it sets up Pikeville in excellent shape all the way down to the 11-yard line with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. Chance maybe to get it into the end zone before intermission. Coach Hillard Howard calling the timeout as you see him huddling with his troops on the field and starts to head off. We saw an excellent game in our first game of the evening as Belfry came back to beat Corbin 14 to 10 and 
Well, this game is off to an excellent start as well. A little more offense in this one, though. Eight seconds left. Blair, first and 10 from the 11, firing and incomplete. That time again, pass intended for Robbie Wright. It could have been a touchdown. It certainly right could there. have. Pass yes, he was open, and, and it just stepped across the uh, goal line, and, and it did cut out to the left of the flat. Incomplete, so second and 10 for Pikeville from their 11-yard line. I'll tell you, they're going to have to rush this play or they'll get a delay of game call. Only three seconds ticked off the clock on that play. So they have a chance once again. They do get the play off. And Blair back to pass, being rushed out of the pocket. And looking, looking. Better. And it is complete for a touchdown in the end zone to Robbie Wright. No, oh, check Chris it. McNamee. Chris McNamee. Great catch. Great catch. <laughs> I lost sight. He yeah. got behind the monitor and I couldn't see. Unfortunately, you didn't see it on your screen because we missed it in the end zone. But a beautiful pass reception to Chris McNamee from Matt Blair. And Pikeville has scored again as time expires. Here in the first half, they'll go for the two-point conversion over the middle, complete. Yeah, I don't know what the price of admission was here tonight. Everybody's got their money worth. That's right. Half. right. They completed over the middle to Sean Neely, and Pikeville comes back to come with him one here at intermission at 21-20. Oh, the Beachwood Tigers. What a first half we have seen here in this football game. Pikeville and Beachwood, an offensive field first half. And we come to halftime here, the second game of the night, 1987. Pikeville National Bank, Pike County Bowl. And the score at intermission has Beachwood leading Pikeville by one point, 21-20. Boating, it's great fun. Beachwood Tigers leading 21-20 over the Pikeville Panthers. That's the way the game ended. As a heavy downpour with lightning forced the delay of the second half for about 45 minutes to an hour. There seemed to be no relief in sight for the game to continue, so officials suspended the contest, and there was no agreeable time for the two teams to finish the game, so it goes in the books as a suspended game for now, with Beachwood leading 21-20. So that wraps up WYMT's coverage of the 1987 Pikeville National Bank Pike County Bowl. This is Jeff Franklin saying thanks to my broadcast partners, Kath Sizemore and Neil Smith, and to everyone who helped make this year's Pike County Bowl another huge success, despite the inclement weather. Be sure and join us for our next high school football telecast on Saturday, September 5th, as we bring you the Honey Bowl from Jackson as Breathitt County plays host to Johnson Central. For the entire WIMT crew, this is Jeff Franklin once again saying so long from the 1987 Pikeville National Bank Pike County Bowl. <laughs>